Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kate Anderson with Government Executive Media Group, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to today's program, Government's Guide to Visual Communication, hosted by Samsung. Designed and built for effective collaboration, efficient information sharing, and enhanced customer experiences, digital displays add a critical visual element to all aspects of government work. During the COVID-19 pandemic, secure communication platforms, which allow for social distancing, have become critical, and digital displays offer an innovative way to interact with citizens and the workforce alike. Today, we're diving into use cases for digital displays in government and exploring how agencies can tap into this technology to securely advance mission goals. Before we get started with the program, I'd like to point out the Q&A tab to the right of your screen, which allows you to ask a question. We'll have dedicated time to answer those at the end of the program, but feel free to submit them throughout. Now, to kick things off, I'd like to turn it over to John Diddig, Senior Business Development Manager at Samsung. John? Uh, yes, thank, thank you very much. And, um, and Kat, I believe you're going to share the deck, correct? Okay, great. So um, thank you all for joining us today and uh, really appreciate uh, your time. Uh, and obviously uh, you are here to present on with Samsung uh, on the government's guide to, to visual communications. As we go to the next slide, your speakers today, just to kind of tell you a little bit about who uh, who's going to be uh, managing everything from the Samsung side is my name is John Diddig. I'm a senior business development manager uh, with Samsung. I've uh, been in the industry for about uh, 27 years. We also have uh, a few of my esteemed colleagues, uh, Kat Christopher, who is on the Alliance team. She's a senior manager uh, at Samsung. And of course, Mike Bonick, who is the director of our government sales uh, at uh, Samsung Electronics America. So, uh, in terms of the agenda, we've got a, a pretty jam-packed uh, agenda for you, and we hope it's extremely in, uh, informative. Uh, so, who are we? Who is Samsung? We're going to give you a little bit of a snapshot of, uh, you know, who we are, uh, and then we're going to talk about the new normal. Uh, I think that um, all of us uh, obviously have been impacted uh, on many levels from, from COVID-19, and there are some back-to-business uh, solutions that we are going to take a deep dive in uh, to uh, on, on the actual deck and then also emergency communication solutions uh, and then also solving everyday challenges. Uh, so with that, um, Mike Bonick, in terms of who, who we are, you want to take that slide? Great. Yeah, thank you. So just a little bit of background on Samsung and our focus on the uh, uh, your mission and our, our federal vertical focus. So we've been uh, focused on the federal market for a number of years. Um, those of you that are local, we've got a DC-based office, and in that office located on Capitol Hill, we've got a demo and an executive briefing center, which actually is open now, and we'd love to have you down to showcase some of our products in a, a true uh, federal uh, showcase and, and some highlighting some of the different use cases on, on your mission. Um, Samsung is, has a complete team focused on your mission with uh, technical um, as well as some solution uh, help um, that's focused 100% on the federal vertical. In addition to that, our product focused, we've got uh, the majority of our products are coming out of our factory in uh, Mexico which is a benefit for a couple things. One, it's uh, Mexico is a TAA country, so the production is uh, friendly with uh, some of the compliance, as well as uh, supply chain working out of North America is real friendly on the lead times and so on. So our product portfolio uh, starts on some of the entry level desktop displays for client computing, uh, moving up to some of the higher res uh, desktop displays, as well as some specific products for hospitality. And then our main focus is some of the larger end products on our large format displays, which we're gonna talk about today, both our interactive displays, standalone displays, and then moving up is becoming a much bigger area, as well as the 
indoor LED, so these are the super large formats uh, designed, super high resolution, and as well as uh, a division from Sam that, Samsung that focuses on our outdoor LED. You may have seen some of this, similar products up in uh, Times Square and Las Vegas and some of the sporting arenas. So this, this is our product portfolio for displays. Uh, Samsung has got some sister companies that focus on federal, on our mobility uh, products, on phones, but today we're going to talk about 100% on displays. So again, uh, you know, we try to align our product uh, focus really with your mission. So a couple different areas that I think are important as an IT focus for key technologies in the government market, and we really focus what we think are some of the three areas. So uh, a set of displays that are focused on healthcare. Um, again, all the areas focus on IT modernization, and we're going to talk about this today of how to incorporate visual displays to bring up your communication, your VTCs, your lobbies, your communication uh, using more advanced displays. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how to keep these displays secure and keeping your information on your site and not open it up uh, to all the different security aspects. So John, I'm going to turn it back to you and uh, a couple different areas on, on your first uh, slide deck. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. So the new normal, you know, our lives have all changed uh, dramatically in, in the past uh, year. And it's hard to believe we were looking at the, the calendar to see that it's already October. And uh, when uh, Kat, uh, Mike, myself, we were uh, at a sales meeting uh, in Las Vegas in February, and a, uh, a gentleman uh, at Samsung who's a worldwide advisor who lives in Seoul, Korea, came in and said, uh, you don't realize it, but your lives are, are drastically about to change. And so we all looked at him and we're like, uh, what is this guy talking about? And and he's like, sure enough, you know, in two weeks, you're you know probably going to be at home. Things are going to be locked down. And and so at the time, we were like, you know, what's this guy talking about? And then all of a sudden, a couple weeks later, we're like, this guy's the smartest guy in the world. And and of course, we've all been kind of you know living in this in this uh, this this COVID nineteen space. And as we go to the uh, to the next slide with with a lot of the technologies that uh, you're seeing out there, um, you know, we, we never really heard the word social distance last year. We never really heard heard, you know, you know, masks and things of that nature. So in terms of, you know, preventing the spread of whether it's, you know, COVID-19 in and, and the federal space or 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 really any type of of um, eat a disease that might be out there, you know, we're, you know, you really have to reinforce social distancing, right? We're seeing, you know, stay six feet away as you walk up to a kiosk, you enter a building, um, you're trying to minimize physical touch points, uh, obviously decrease, uh, you know, the population and the people that, that are, you're surrounded by. Uh, and then also all of us have to be flexible, right? I mean, we've all kind of adapted and pivoted in this new environment, whether you're working for home, uh, or if you're in some of the states that have gone back to business, I know some states are are, are relatively very tight, like in California and New York, where yeah, you know they're still kind of figuring things out. Um, and then and and then also you know when you look to uh, back to business solutions, you really want to go with a trusted partner in the industry. And there there's three key attributes that I'd like all of you to take uh, today and regarding the back to business solutions that we're going to talk about uh, in the federal space. So number one is um, is is social distancing. Uh, the second is temperature and the third is uh, sanitation, right? Those are the three uh, key bullet points that whenever somebody is talking about a solution in this you know, post COVID-19 that all of us uh, are living in, uh, that you need to take into an account from a technology standpoint, and we're going to cover all those in the uh, in the slide decks today. So these are no matter where you go, right? You go to a retailer, you go to a, a federal building, uh, you go to uh, an office space. You know, kids working at home. You know, you, you see all these different uh, you know signs, right? And it, and it's really the new norm. And, you know, who knows how long uh, this is going to be, right? I mean, we know that through the end of the year and probably a good part of next year, 
that uh, that we are going to continue to see this in in the mask wearing and everything else, just to to from a a, a precaution area. Uh, you know, you also see X's on the floor, and 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 no matter where you go, you obviously changes see changes, and those changes are really there to protect all of us, right? So from a technology standpoint. So it goes back to the uh, the three bullet points that I mentioned in terms of distancing, temperature, and sanitation. And and with that said, we're going to get into uh, some of the solutions. So emergency communication solutions. So the first one. So uh, digital hand sanitizers are really uh, very rare. Um, you see a lot of sanit regular sanitizer solutions hanging on a wall and things of that nature. So one of the things that that we are seeing a very big demand in are digital sanitizers, and these units can be placed uh, at the entry point of a building. They can be placed inside of a lobby. Uh, they can be placed outside of a meeting room, outside of a of a, a, a like a huddle room, and it's a great place where you can actually control the messaging for that particular business. So I'll give you an example uh, on the federal side. Let's say it's the uh, the Social Security Administration. So all of the messaging when you enter that building can actually be put on our displays. It's, it, it's scheduled um, and we use something called Magic Info. There's a lot of um, technologies out there from a CMS uh, standpoint, but uh, the nice thing about a digital hand sanitizer is, is there's really uh, no end to where these can fit inside of a of a federal environment. Uh, the other thing is 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 the message can be put on there. So, for example, when somebody walks into the so Social Security Administration building up in um, in DC, uh, all of the messaging for COVID to enter that building can be placed on that display. You can also put uh, messaging to see see the security desk, see the manager the check-in point. So for any type of federal business, it's a really good solution uh, to have, especially at the entry points, at multiple entry points. The other thing is, is a lot of the, all these units um, from a digital hand sanitizing perspective can be networked together. Uh, so if you have eight different entry points, all of the units can all be net on the same network and they can all network uh, with each other. You can have different messages on uh, different uh, entry points, or you can have the same message, it's really up to you. So for example, uh, from 10 to four, if there's a manager or a security person that is, uh, is walking in, um, or that's actually the head of the building at that time, you can have their name on the, on the, um, the digital hand sanitizer. So when they come in, if somebody has questions, if somebody tests high for a temperature, whatever it might be, all the guidelines can actually be on the digital hand sanitizer. Another really key attribute of this product is the hand sanitizers can work on gel or foam. And so I know that all of us, if you went out to a, a business location or if you ordered from one of the catalog mail houses, uh, did you know the foam and the gel inserts were very hard to find? So if you can't find one, you can actually work with the other. And inside of this particular one, there's a 1,200 milliliter gel insert that uh, goes inside, and it works on gel or foam. The units uh, actually can be on a on an anti on a uh, anti tip stand or hung on a wall. But we find within the federal space that uh, the digital hand sanitizers are a very big value add. We're seeing quite a bit of interest you know across uh, the government sector with uh, the hand sanitizers the next solution we're going to talk about uh, is based upon temperature so you know we mentioned earlier we talked about sanitation we talked about uh, temperature and we talked about distancing um, so this uh, this type of solution uh, you'll probably see it uh, there's a lot of ca uh, ca counties and a lot of uh, uh, government offices that are actually kind of mandating temperature checks before uh, guests or employees actually walk into a building. Uh, the nice thing about these devices is they're really built to scale. So you can do rapid temperatures like one, two, et cetera, but we do recommend people to social distance six foot between temperature. 
These devices will give you the temperature automatically. And the temperature accuracy is within 0.5% of somebody's actual temperature. And uh, that's within the margin of error. And the reason why 0.5 is within the margin of error is because you could be in, in Phoenix on a hot day in the sun and walk out, or you could be in a, in, a, in, a, in a cold area up in DC when it's snowing and your temperature could vary by about half a percent. So that's why there's a 0.5% uh, you know, accuracy of um, one way or the other built into these devices. The camera on most of these devices is a thermal camera, so it's extremely accurate. accurate. Uh, some, some government entities um, allow uh, some people to even clock in, so you can actually use this to clock into a building. Uh, you can use access control to actually use your access control or your checkpoint badge. Uh, on top of getting a temperature. And not only that, but uh, all of the uh, devices can all network at multiple entry points. So for example, if, uh, if somebody walked into one door today and they walked into another door, all of that is actually registered on the device. The other thing that these um, devices do is they will provide gra granular reporting as much as you want, as much as you, you need. So if 43 people entered one of the uh, federal facilities in DC today and, and seven tested high for a temperature, um, you can actually put in there uh, what happened to those employees or those guests. Did you send them home? Was their temperature, even though it was slightly elevated, uh, were they still able to enter the building? And, and all of that data is all hosted in the cloud. So it's really good information you know, for any type of, you know, government uh, entity or even a military base. So you can actually uh, track people's temperatures and you can track them up to a year, two years, 60 days. It's really up to you from a scheduling standpoint. The other um, nice attribute about this is if somebody has a high temperature, for example, let's say 101 degrees, uh, you can actually set up a, um, an automatic uh, text or an automatic alert to the uh, facilities manager. So uh, they can get alerted that somebody with a high temperature is actually in their facility. And of course, if somebody's got 102 or 103, you know, whether they're, you know, a potential risk or even, you know, have a high fever or the flu, you wanna make sure that you make the best judgment on what you do with that employee or guest. And again, that's all up to your code and mandates that you have for any building um, that you are managing from a facility standpoint. The other uh, uh, tie-in with this is uh, our, you know, our displays uh, or any type of display actually works as a messaging board. So if you look to the picture to the left there, you see the, uh, the te temperature tablet device with a display and the display really provides a safety first message. So when somebody is walking into a facility, and they do test high, all of the guidelines are on those displays, uh, you know, just for the precaution. The actual test of the employee or the guest is not registered on the device, but the, but the display actually provides a good message of what the parameters and what the priorities are when somebody does test high and the next steps on where to go. So uh, it's a nice uh, pairing together and, and across a lot of different uh, federal platforms and, and government platforms uh, in general, whether it's state or local, even in education, we're starting to see a, a ton of demand uh, in this space because uh, obviously temperature is, is the number one indicator that somebody you know, is obviously sick and you want to make sure that you make the right decisions on what to do with that employee or guest. So it's a really good uh, industry solution. And uh, there's a lot of different uh, variations of this solution in the marketplace today. The next solution um, is very similar to the one that we just uh, went over. Uh, what we're finding is that if 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 customers don't want a solution with a uh, a separate display and a tablet like device, there are kiosk, wall mount, and countertop options that are available 
that'll scale and they'll have the same similar uh, software platform. So it'll give you the granular reporting on people uh, who, who have tested high, people who have uh, you know, normal temperatures, et cetera. So all that granular reporting is still available. It's just that this type of solution offers kind of a different format. You know, some people like the kiosk look and feel, some people like to have something hanging on the wall, and then some people like to have it on a countertop where you actually walk up. So this just kind of gives you a different variation uh, of what is available in the market. And the other thing about this is that when the units are not being used as uh, temperature taking devices, you can actually have uh, the messaging, as I mentioned, in terms of the scheduling or, or the contacts for the building. Uh, to be on there, or you can run even advertising. So if these were to be on a military base, you know, for example, in the federal space, uh, and it was a PX, there can be specials running on the actual uh, software platform, um, or even in like a, a like a, a cafeteria. Some people want to make sure that if somebody does enter the building, sometimes there's extra scans in certain areas of the. Um, the facility. So if it's going into a cafeteria when it's not being used as a temperature device, you can actually run full blown advertisements or full blown videos on these units. So they're built to scale outside of providing a temperature and can be used for other applications uh, besides temperature taking. And then as we move to the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about social distancing. So uh, you know, a year ago, somebody were to say social distance, you'd be like, you know, what are you talking about? And and uh, and so obviously it's a term that all of us uh, are dealing with uh, at every level of life. And so uh, what we're finding is that these traffic carts are becoming very popular in a lot of different areas. Uh, in, the, in the federal space uh, for escalators, uh, in larger uh, buildings, and then also uh, elevators as well, and then any area that has a limited amount of people inside of an area, and, I, and I'll give you a perfect example, is if you were going to walk into a, um, a conference room, or if you were going to walk into a, a, a mini are arena or a command and control center uh, up in D.C., uh, the, there is a camera on the side of these units and the camera actually counts people going in. So if you're only limiting uh, 12 people at a time inside of a particular area, it'll count the people through that. It actually recognizes the, the, the head through heat um, walking in. And then once 12 people are in that particular room, you'll see a stop sign on the out, outdoor side. When somebody walks out and you've got 10 people in, then it'll say green again. And so these are really good areas where you need to social uh, distance uh, people. And again, it could be a meeting room, an escalator, an elevator. Uh, we have a couple different versions and you'll find a few of these in, in the marketplace today. There are good versions, which are plug-in, which take a standard uh, outlet. And then there are um, uh, better versions, which are remote powered, where there's a remote battery pack in the bottom of these, and you can roll them out into an area or an atrium or anywhere uh, where you want to social distance uh, employees or guests. And um, the, these come in a variety of different screen sizes. What you see on here is a, is a is a 32 and a 49 inch, but they can be built uh, for uh, indoor purposes, and then they also can be used for outdoor if needed. There are a wide variety of of outdoor solutions with kiosks that we have seen, um, and so the one thing you have to make sure is is an outdoor is is the power. But there are outdoor units that are made uh, by Samsung or or other companies in the market that are 4,000 nits. And so you can see them from far away in the distance and rain, snow, and things of that nature. So it's a great solution where you really need to control traffic and also, um, uh, you know, the you know the social distancing. Uh, and it's uh, it's a really neat solution for that. And as we go to the next slide, 
We're going to talk a little bit about Samsung as a global brand, and I am going to pass uh, the mic back to, uh, to Mike Bonick. Great. Thank you, John. So we're going to go on to the next slide. We're going to focus on a couple different um, use cases in, that we're seeing in the federal market. We're seeing definitely a, a, a lot more demand for visual communications using displays from the big areas in command and control centers with situational awareness to information like we see all the time up at airports for um, how, um, how to pass through security. It's probably one of the longest used ones to uh, improving uh, citizen experience in terms of uh, what's next and you go to the DMV. So there's a lot of different areas that we're seeing displays. And I think if you look back at each of yours uh, building an agency, you'll see uh, some of this being used used today in different areas. Go ahead, we can go to the next slide. So there's four areas that we're going to focus on here are some different use cases that we're seeing most widely used. So end user computing de de uh, displays at your desktop, uh, visual communications in terms of st are some of our standalone displays, uh, some of the large format displays used in command and control, and interactive training with some of our touch-enabled displays. So I'm going to bring pass this on here to uh, Kat here. We're going to introduce Kat Christopher, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of these different use cases. So um, some of the end user computing, I think uh, all of you have seen this. We've, uh, you know, used to be a, a baseline from, you know, 19 inch, if I'm going to go date myself, is going this back a little bit, and then it became a standard of, you know, 22 inch, and then as some of the price came down, it became 24 and so on. So what we're seeing today is really at the desktop the need for higher resolutions, uh, more displays, and the better front of screen performance. And I'm going to, so Kat, what, what are you seeing out there also um, from, from some of your different uh, customers that are out there at the desktop? Yeah, those 19 inch and smaller sizes have definitely gone away and replaced with larger, you know, calling out those 34 and 49 inch curved monitors and the curvature is pretty cool. It definitely has a, a fun look and feel. But if we all think about how much time we're sitting in front of the computer now and our desktop monitors and the ergonomic design of a curved display that meets the curvature of your eye, um, it really helps with retinal strain uh, and eye fatigue. Again, we're looking at our, dis our desktop monitors all the time now. And it, it's also for kind of those massive real estate replacing the configurations of two smaller displays next to each other that each have different flicker rates and different refresh rates. So being able to have uh, a larger display with more pixel density, larger real estate, I mean, it really, it's designed for any business application involving large data sets. So if you think about how much screen you're looking at and how much data you have, you're able to consume more of those uh, the visuals and also being able to split things up in the way that you want. So really the end user computing component of all of this, uh, Mike, you asked about some of the trends. It's just that it's pixel density and higher resolution. And it's those larger displays with lots of real estate uh, and serving an ergonomic purpose. Okay, hey, great. So are you seeing so anything in particular for government specifically for some of those designs? A lot, a lot of the same things we're seeing. Uh, really, the, the the main thing is uh, two two displays are becoming the standard. Still, I think we're still seeing a lot of uh, the standard 1080 resolution is the majority of standards out there, but it's definitely rapidly going. I, I think we're seeing a we're probably going to pass over the QHD, the 2K resolution, although that's still a big part of our portfolio. But I think the government's going to go from 1K straight into 4K. I think uh, that that you know, as the price comes down on that, we'll see that as the standard in the coming years. And then we also have conference rooms to talk about. Yeah, and I think we're all using them more today in terms of, <laughs> uh, you know, video conferencing. Uh, I think that's a big goal in there. And I'll talk a little bit about that back on the conferencing. Uh, uh, the Cisco and their WebEx product, I think the actual product is called the Room Kit. Uh, WebEx is their platform, and the room kit is the hardware. Uh, Cisco is definitely the, you know, one of the leaders in that area in terms of the federal market. 
and they have got a certification program for their displays, and Samsung recently uh, was uh, become under that certification program. So, Kat, what, why is that important to have the display work really closely with the VTC supplier? So having the built-in functionality sets and being able to manage that protocol to have these bundle sets put together, it really gives you that all-in-one solution for smarter collaboration, right? So it's the overall conglomeration of various different components from Samsung screen sizes to WebEx, Cisco, RoomKit, their huddle space solutions as well. So really bringing in uh, all of those different components and having the video conferencing solutions in conjunction with the IT infrastructure. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think we get a lot of questions I get on the, uh, just coming back to Cisco, and we work with all the different platforms, but this was just uh, one we were focusing on today, is that, you know, that Cisco room kit to connect to that, uh, uh, it looks like a speaker bar, but it's a video bar. It's just, frankly, it's just an HDMI connection. So it'll work with all types of different displays, but being certified with Cisco allows the coordination and the sync of the video and the voice together. Also, one remote controls both. So there definitely is a tighter, tighter integration between the display from one vendor and uh, the, the VTC from a different vendor. So definitely on the rise, and uh, uh, we've got a number of different products to fit that. So let's go to the next slide. So the Next thing we're talking about is some of our standalone conferencing. Standalone, yeah. So, I mean, we think about entrances and lobbyways, but atriums, really any open space, when we talk about visual communication, engaging audiences, uh, from a lot of different layers on this, um, really the, di the visual display component allows for like visible evidence of what is going on. So it can not only be branding and informational, it can be updating, it can be dynamic uh, status boards. There's many levels for many agencies with all different characteristics. So these displays being able to not only have uh, upscaling for UHD, but they have a nice slim design as well from the back end. So depending on how really you want to decorate the environment and knowing that these spaces are going to be able to be controlled safely and securely. And Mike, you'll talk about that in a little bit, right? Yes, yeah, I think we can actually move on to that. So what we're, what we are seeing is uh, the, the real need to have the security at the display. And so a little bit of background on that and that what's driving this are a couple things. One, the, the term IoT, and this, this, the whole industry of including wireless in everything that we have. Uh, I just got a new garage door opener and it came with Wi-Fi. It's not something I asked for, but it, it's there. Uh, you know, the speaker bar under my TV has a Wi-Fi platform in it. So in, in the display market is, it used to be, it was the base level products, the entry level products, were pretty stripped down and the more advanced products had features like Wi-Fi. So there was a, a difference in that. But today across all different vendors, Wi-Fi is a standard on all of the different platforms from the entry level to the more advanced. And so the, the challenge on that is at the, you know, for the agency security officer is they would rather not manage a display. You know, it's not a Windows device that they've got some tools to manage Wi-Fi, the Windows device. It's not, you know, a phone with an MDM can control it. And if these displays are in a conference room where the Wi-Fi was there so you can hook up your notebook without a dongle, and if these displays are there, you know, hooked up to the, 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 the agency network, it's just something that they would rather not have to manage. So what Samsung has done, and Samsung was the leader in this, and it was really driven from customer interaction uh, mostly at the, our DOD agencies and some of the Intel agencies, is they asked us to remove Wi-Fi from our, you know, top-level premier displays. Um, so we have a line of displays now that are designed specifically for the government that have no, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, and the term smart TV is something that we get, we get a lot of questions from 
that are more of Samsung's consumer TV, something you would find in your living room or that you would buy from Best Buy or Amazon, and those have access to a, uh, you know, a smart TV application where you can watch Netflix and so on, where the TV then would connect to an outside app. So these definitely do not have that. So to keep in the whole security platform is no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, no smart TVs. They're backed on the Samsung Knox platform, which allows added security uh, on the back end of the displays to help prevent um, you know, anything with an IP address intrusion from the back end. So um, again, Cisco certified, made in Mexico, TAA, so a real secure platform between all these. These range from 55 inch up to 85, and is really the core of our platform into the government where we can say it's a true secure display and from Samsung, the secure display company. So, Kat, I'm going to actually, I think you've got a lot of interaction with this on the, uh, with your customers on interactive displays. And I think when you bring up interactive displays, I, I, I think of, you know, there's really kind of two different areas uh, out there. There's uh, that are a flip product, which is unique to Samsung, but then there's interactive displays that, you know, require special pens and so on. So tell me about the flip and how is that different from maybe some of the traditional interactive displays? The flip was launched a couple of years ago, and it really, it got a lot of great feedback. I think a lot of times when I'm in the field, I'm talking to customers and to partners alike about what they want to do, what solutions they want to bring to the table. And a lot of times, uh, huddle space, collaboration, uh, interconnectivity, all of these words come into play when we think about touch interaction. And the one thing that's great about the flip was really uh, the, the low learning curve, to be honest. A lot of our competitors and various touch enabled products can be very difficult to use. Uh, and it kind of deters people from wanting to use it when it has a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of feature sets, and uh, a lot of things that can be intimidating when you're just looking to do something simple. So from literally replacing stinky pen and paper, that's how simple this product is. And I think that that really gives it a lot of oomph when we think about getting together with people, writing on something, making notes and annotations, and sharing that. So there are levels of security on this as well from device management so that whatever it is that we are collaborating on and whatever we are making annotations are isn't accessible. Uh, but this unit, like I said, from the connectivity to the adoption rate from training centers, in education, in hotels, across various industries, uh, the flip itself has gotten a lot of great feedback because of the simplicity. And the sizes, 55 inch can be something that's modular on wheels. All it needs is power and you can go from space to space. A 65 inch and an 85 inch is likely to be wall mounted, but it does, it's called the flip because it rotates from portrait to landscape. So depending on what type of device you're presenting from, uh, the aspect ratio can match up, whether that's a laptop or a mobile phone. You mentioned uh, sharing after you're in a meeting. How, how's, that, how's that handled? What are some of the different areas you can share the content? Like we're looking at this screen here, a guy's got a lot of notes from the note meeting. How, how would you share that afterwards? So it really depends on your preference, but there are only a few different ways of going about doing that. Uh, you're able to share either by printing, uh, you can access an active directory if you'd like to be able to send those meeting notes to the people that were in the meeting or outside of the meeting. You can transfer it to a USB or you can save it directly to the device. So depending on what that session looks and feels like would depend on how you would like to share that content. So, so what you're saying is no more like I normally do is get up and take a picture of the whiteboard with my phone. Huh? No. No, or all of those post-its that we used to put all over the place and then having to compile those. Now everything is managed in one, we call it a scroll because you can scroll up and scroll down, but it's managed on one uh, PDF type of file that can be shared. Great, well, thanks. So let's go over the last one today before we close out. And this is um, 
uh, an area that's definitely gaining more momentum. So these are the, the very large uh, video walls. Um, traditionally, what we think about as video walls are tiled video walls, even though it, with Samsung, the area between them is a super small bezel. You still see a bezel between each of the tiled uh, displays. So the new LED uh, product uh, is, can be designed and fit basically any configuration and is completely seamless. So the, the, the look and feel is you can fit any size room from smaller rooms that are super high res up to big conference rooms or command and control centers. And uh, we're seeing a really big demand for, again, more visual communication, bigger sizes, higher res. So Kat, what, what's what else is driving that area in, the, in terms of the, the, the big video walls? Uh, I've seen a lot of that with like projector replacements, but what else, what else are you seeing out there that's driving the bigger, the bigger demand? Absolutely, whether it's uh, mission critical environments. So one of the things with the video wall product, which I, I love Samsung's video wall product, there is a bezel. LED walls, you don't see or miss any information that the bezel would maybe uh, block your vision. So when we think about mission critical environments, whether it's control rooms or broadcasting studios, uh, executive conference rooms, when we're looking at Excel spreadsheets, so any information is all seen on the display. These are reliable solutions that last for uh, the type of technology, they last for a very long time. So 100,000 hours is somewhere around 11 years. So this technology is a little bit different than the traditional video wall technology. But as you mentioned, Mike, we can make them as big as possible. I mean, if you have the uh, wall that you'd like to fill, uh, there really isn't any limitation to that. An added advantage to LED as well, uh, the newer line that Samsung is coming out with has a remote power solution. So that remote power supply is making sure that there is no downtime at all in any of these potentially, uh, it could be potentially detrimental to the object or the mission if something happens to any of these displays. So this solution is basically never turning off. Uh, the remote power option provides users with that type of design, but enabling a redundant power supply so that in any type of demanding environment, you are able to see without bezel or break all of your content all the time. So I think another piece with that, and I actually I just saw an announcement today that that, that was that product was just announced here from our headquarters uh, this week. So if we think of that, it's almost like a super long extension cord. So uh, where you're not bringing the, 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 the power center to where the the, the, the display is you you take the display and run the power cord to where the the data center is or the, the the availability of power down the hall. So I think that's a little bit more flexibility, especially if you're working in some of these older buildings that don't have the uh, the ability to to run power in. So uh, one one more note on this before we we close out and maybe open it up for some Q and A that came over. Um, uh, so. These products, uh, Samsung has a, a couple of what we call as our EBC, as our executive briefing centers, uh, outside of New York City, Orange County, Southern California, just opened up in Dallas, and then there's one in DC located on Capitol Hill, which is more uh, uh, government use case focused. So these products are all demo. This isn't something that really we can put in the back of the car and come see you and demo on your site. So uh, we've got a couple different centers around the country, and. Uh, they're open, they're all open today, some special uh, areas to get in and see demos, and I think some of that will be relaxing here shortly. So if you've got some, uh, if you want to see some of this working, uh, a couple different sites around the country. So thank you, Kat. Uh, thank you, John. I think this is, uh, finishes up our slide deck today, and uh, wanted to just turn it back to our panelists. If any other closing comments or, or, or anything that you want to uh, close out before we finish up today. I would like to thank everyone, and I hope that you found this time to be useful. And should there be any questions, uh, either put them in the Q&A or uh, we'd be happy to answer them now.
Otherwise, thanks again. John, anything from you? No, I was going to say, if there's any any questions, they can always reach out to us. Uh, I think uh, our email uh, address was provided and our LinkedIn address. So uh, here to help with any questions if, uh, if anyone has them. Okay, great. We have the, uh, all of our information is, is available. And, and again, any questions, feel free to let us know. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.